In this video, we're going to calibrate the color of this image, which was taken with a Sony CCD color sensor. This means that the master light generated in the pre-processing stage is a color image. We'll use the default filters in SPCC, which are the Sony color sensors with ultraviolet and infrared cut filters. When working with color sensors, we should always use the ideal quantum efficiency curve since the filters in these sensors include this sensitivity curve implicitly. To see the image better, we need to unlink the RGB channels and apply the auto stretch again. Now we create a preview of the sky background. Drag it to the region of interest section and execute SPCC. The trends on the graphs are practically linear. Now we link the RBG channels again and reapply the auto stretch to see the white balance. With Sony sensors, we have three options. We can have a look at these in Curve Explorer. The first includes the sensor's full sensitivity range from ultraviolet to infrared. The second cuts the ultraviolet, and the third cuts the ultraviolet and the infrared. Using cameras with ultraviolet and infrared cut filters is highly recommended because both CCD and CMOS color sensors have a very wide infrared sensitivity range. What's more, for wavelengths of 800 nanometers and above, the three color channels are equally sensitive to infrared light. So, we're actually mixing all the infrared light from the objects in the three filters. We can avoid this by completely cutting the infrared. By doing this, the colors will be displayed much more accurately. Let's see what happens if we select filters with no cut at all. In this execution, we're going to integrate the light from the catalog stars from ultraviolet to infrared, but in our image, we only have the visible light. As a result, when we compare the catalog colors with the colors in our image, we get a lot of outliers that deviate from the general linear trend in both the red channel and the blue. However, thanks to the robust linear fit in SPCC, the weights in this second execution only change to 0.97 and 0.98. This is a significant change, but still very acceptable given the large numbers of outliers we have in the point cloud. Now we're going to calibrate the color of these two images of M31. The images are the same, but one master has been obtained using debiorization and the other with drizzle. As in astrophotography, we strongly recommend using the drizzle method because it doesn't involve any data interpolation. And this is even more important if we're using color sensors, as is the case in this photograph. In color images, debiorization interpolates most of the pixels. So for every true red pixel, we have to interpolate three more pixels, and for every blue pixel, another three pixels. And this may generate photometric errors in some images. Let's take a look. We can use the default settings because the image was taken with a Sony color sensor, and we also want the ideal quantum efficiency curve. Now we create a preview of the sky background and drag it to the region of interest section of the process window. Now we're going to apply the process to both images with exactly the same settings. Let's link the RGB channels and apply the auto stretch. Now we apply the same process to the image without drizzle. The images look similar, but let's stretch them and increase the color saturation. 
First, we drag the STF settings and drop them on the bottom bar of the histogram transformation window. We turn on track view, apply the process to the image, and disable the STF by pressing F12. Now we activate the image on the right so that the STF shows us the display settings for that image. We copy the settings over to the histogram transformation window and apply the process to the image. Finally, we open Curves Transformation, select the S-curve, and increase the color saturation of both images using the same process. As you can see, the image without drizzle is more yellow and greenish than the drizzle image. This effect won't be visible in every image. It depends on the image data and PSF. The difference isn't always the same. For good results, we always recommend using the drizzle method, especially with cameras with color sensors. Mm -hmm.